So, do you want me to uh, project it? I don't see it on the screen. Uh, it will be. Hang on. Don't worry. So, okay. wh what I'm presenting is uh, now you should see it on the screen. Um, a review of uh, uh, it's sort of half paper, half book called Ethically Aligned Design. It's by the uh, IEEE Global Initiative on the Ethics of Autonomous and Intelligent Systems. Uh, it comes out as a PDF, and, and there it is there. Uh, I also have an article on it, and or well, a short post on it. Um, and uh, so you can access this document at that post. And if you need the URL for that, it's just down www.downs.ca slash post slash six seven five four nine and and that'll get you to it um, so basically what this is is the IEEE's efforts to grapple with the uh, ethical issues associated with uh, autonomous and intelligent systems and what they've done is they've put this together uh, as uh, a document to advance discussion uh, about how we can establish as they say ethical and social implementations for intelligent and autonomous systems it's an interesting approach they say they want to align them to define ethical values and ethical principles prioritize human well-being uh, inspire the creation of a set of standards which I'll talk about and facilitate they say uh, the emergence of national and global policies and you see the link to my post and therefore to this report on that slide and that slide of course will be available in the wiki after this because Bruno will upload them right or not Bruno uh, Jean-Francois so here's the process what they did is they set up a series of uh, what they call the P7000 series, a series of groups to identify consensus on a broad range of these ethical issues. And I kind of question that, but uh, we'll come back to that. And so this P7000 series is broken down into a set of subcommittees. Each of the subcommittees contributes a part to the report. So we have, for example, transparency of autonomous processes, data privacy process, standard on child and student data governance, and standard on personal data AI agent, to which I've been contributing a little bit, very marginally, and nothing in the last little bit. Uh, you can see the uh, the URL there on the screen that you would go to to see these different subcommittees. So uh, the general principles that they're following for the, this whole thing, there's three major general principles. First of all, quote, to embody the highest ideals of human benefic benefic benef beneficence. Thank you. Beneficence as a superset of human rights. Uh, and there's a, there's, a, there's a lot wrapped up in that. Uh, I put in a couple of definitions there. Uh, from Wikipedia, it's a concept in research ethics that states that researchers should have the welfare of the research participant as well as, well as the goal, or as a goal in any clinical trial. Uh, from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, uh, the term connotes acts of mercy, kindness, and charity. Um, it's related, although the document doesn't really make this clear, it's related to a concept called the, uh, the duty of care, uh, which derives from recent work done by, among others, uh, uh, someone called Carol Gilligan, and she has defined this basic set of principles as an underlining set of principles for uh, you know, social science, psychology, and, and other kinds of professional research ethics. Um, they also say that 
the the uh, the work sh or you know the these new systems should prioritize benefits to humanity and the natural environment from the use of AIS that stands for autonomous and intelligent systems and then finally mitigate risks and negative imp impacts including misuse so those are the overarching themes that we have here uh, I don't take these themes as a given. Um, uh, I, for example, uh, while I, I appreciate the ethics of the duty of care, it's not clear to me that the duty of care is uh, the primary objective of, uh, of research processes. Uh, nor, and, and it's not because I don't like care, I mean, I like care, um, but it embodies a principle of ethics that is duty based and it's not clear to me that duties simply accrue to people by virtue of the fact that they're duties um, there needs to be a ground or an impetus for something to become a duty uh, you don't just suddenly you know uh, have duties because you're a person that makes no sense to me anyways anyhow uh, so here are the general principles that follow from this, um, and I've thrown in some references. One is human rights, that is to say, and they say this specifically uh, with respect to the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights from 1947, a document that, as an aside, is largely ignored by most countries of the world, but leave that aside. Uh, prioritizing well-being, and they refer to the OEC guidelines for measuring well-being, and that's a welcome step up from prioritizing uh, gross domestic product or things like that. Accountability, transparency, and we've had some discussions in our reading group about that. And then awareness of autonomous and intelligent systems, technology, misuse, and of course the, the reference here is to the uh, European Union general data protection regulations. Uh, so the idea is to prioritize the benefits to humanity and the environment, um, which might not play well, say, uh, in, in some political circles, and of course to mitigate risks and negative impacts. So there we are. So, um, there's basically we can look at the content of the report by looking at the committees. So uh, in the first version of the report, what I'm talking about here is the second, but in the first version of the report, they talked about embedding values into autonomous systems, methodologies to guide research and design, safety and beneficence. Benef I hate that word. I want to pronounce it differently uh, than, than than it was pronounced earlier, but I don't know, I can't get it out of my mouth for some reason. Uh, personal data and access control, uh, reframing autonomous weapons systems, which is kind of a, a concern, uh, economics and humanitarian issues, not USIs, uh, and law. Uh, USIs is a great word though. I, which I, means what? No, it's it's a it's a typo for issues. Oh, <laughs> but but, yeah. but I, I think I think it should be a word in its own right and have its own meaning. I, I think that would be a lot of fun, and then we could have usies, which are like issues, but they have to do with AI. But no, uh, okay, new committees, <laughs> um, affective computing policy, classical ethics in AIS mixed reality and ICT and well-being. So, and so that group, that forms the different chapters of this report. So, I can't cover the whole report in the time that we have, obviously. So I've chosen to focus on a few sections, and one of them is classical ethics in AIS, partly because, you know, as uh, a real life trained philosopher, um, I have background in ethics and so can speak somewhat responsibly to it. And also because it's interesting to see how they view the various issues of ethics. So here's what they're doing in classical ethics in autonomous and intelligent, intelligent systems. First of all, they find it important to draw from both 
philosophical and religious traditions. Um, so, okay, we have secular traditions like utilitarianism, virtue ethics, and deontological ethics, uh, which is the ethics of uh, duty um, and requirements. And then they say religious and culture-based systems such as Buddhism, Confucianism, Ubuntu, and Shinto. Now, I have nothing against any of those four systems, but it's, it struck me as an odd set of four systems to be drawing from, um, it, given that it doesn't draw from uh, the entire Judeo-Christian Islamic tradition at all. So they have sections on these four, but not those other religions. Oh, uh, hang on a second. <laughs> you mean these are the only four that they're drawing from? Is that what you're saying? These are the only four that are included in the report. So, <coughs> arguably, and they might argue, um, they need to include these because the others are just implicit in everything else. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, the Aboriginal uh, views as well, they are from Canada. I mean, the North American Aboriginal views aren't included in there. No, they're not. They're not included either. And uh, if they're concerned about the environment, that would be an interesting yeah. thing to look at. Yeah. And the, the thing is, and, and this, this is you know a, a, an underlying issue in the whole project. Uh, they suggest, in some cases explicitly, that there's a, a consensus to be found in these ethical issues. And my experience is, no, there isn't. Not with respect to ethics, uh, you know, we we can barely define a consensus with respect to law, much less ethics. So, I think I think the you know it's it's you know the 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 application of ethics to autonomous and intelligent systems isn't simply, to my mind, a matter of drawing up a set of standards and applying it to them, um, but but they seem to think it is, and so that's a concern. Uh, let alone you know uh, you know all the different traditions that they could and should be drawing from. But, uh, so, anyhow, the purpose of this classical issues subgroup is to review these philosoph the philosoph philosophical foundations that define especially autonomy and ontology. And that's an issue with some of them. For example, can there be genuinely autonomous systems? Can there be immoral systems? And that's a subject of some dispute, to my mind. I'm not sure it's a subject of dispute within the group, although I've raised it, but uh, it, is, it, it is a question. Just, uh, I think it's in a future slide, but I'll bracket it right now. Um, take the question of autonomous system. What exactly is an autonom autonomous system? It depends on how you define autonomy, but Implicit in many definitions of autonomy is the concept of responsibility. So an autonomous system would be the system that is responsible for its actions. But now if you make the AI responsible for its actions, then what about the person who designed the AI? Because now they're no longer responsible for the actions of the AI because the AI is responsible. That strikes me as a significant ethical problem. Uh, and, and it's, you know, saying that, you know, the system is completely autonomous creates a, a, a cleavage between the responsibility of the system and the responsibility of the designers of the system. They say, well, I just built the system, but you know, systems do what systems do. Uh, Can I add something here, Stephen? Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I read and I commented on Immigration Canada's white paper on digital transformation for uh, 
this type of area. Mm -hmm. And one of their suggestions is to assign responsibility to a person within the department for the decision made by the system, even though the person doesn't know how the system works. Right. <laughs> I sort of flag, well, wait, which employee is going to accept that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very... They're struggling with that same issue at uh, in, uh, Immigration Canada for systems to vet immigrants. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, this is autonomous systems that vet in immigrants, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To, to qualify if people are yeah. at risk, if yeah. they're good candidates to be Canadian citizens, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, if you don't assign responsibility for it, then there is no responsibility for it. Either. Oh, well, yeah, you were rejected from Canada because of a machine, and sorry, but the machine is responsible. It just doesn't seem like a very palatable answer to me. E even if, as you say, and I think quite correctly, nobody would accept responsibility under those conditions. No, and, and I think like you, both are not good, but they have to find a better mechanism to, mi to assign responsibility, not yeah. Assign accountability, yeah. saying you need to explain yeah. this to the person, but it's not my fault they were chosen, right? Yeah. And, and they were going too far in that regard, is yeah, what probably. I thought. The difference between that and people and systems, like bureaucratic systems, at least for people, we ask them to justify their decision. Yeah. And bureau bureaucratic systems are supposed to be accountable, although usually it, end up, it ends up being, well, we made a mistake and we didn't follow our own procedures. Yeah. Uh, but in an autonomous system, it would be requiring an explanation or justification. Also, you could say for the, uh, you know, who's responsible for the autonomous system, I mean, who's responsible for their children? And that's sort of a yeah. similar thing. I don't know. I don't know if people are legally responsible for their children, if the children do bad things, but, you know, it's kind of a similar issue. It is. Except autonomous systems aren't yet intelligent. But I guess eventually when they become actually measurably intelligent, this issue becomes, well, I think it changes actually. But right now, for sure, I, I don't think that we can say, you know, autonomous systems have their own independent intelligence. So moving Does on. Does he talk about free will? Uh, a little bit. Um, in, in the discussion of, well, not, fr not free will as a concept. I didn't see any discussion of free will, capital F, capital W. Um, uh, but, but, you know, that's all placed under the uh, heading of autonomy or autonomous. This, you know, and this raises I think deeper issues here, uh, you know, and that's that's the question of, do they have the right people writing this document? Now, let me be careful. As a document, it's actually pretty good. Um, you know, it's it's really clear, it's well structured, it's well argued, uh, but you know, there's there's huge gaps in their understanding. Um, of, of, of ethics, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the, what's happening here, what, you know, and even the process, you know, using the typical standards writing process as an approach to doing ethics, I think there's something fundamentally wrong with that. It's, um, ethics isn't something that is decided by standards bodies, Eth ethics is something that is decided by society as a whole and the engineers writing this are not representative of society as a whole secondly and crucially and i mentioned this earlier they're treating ethics as though there is a fact of the matter for all of these things that we can find out what the right approach is and then apply that approach but ethics is not a matter of facts um, it's, it's a matter of value. Uh, there may not be a fact of the matter. There, there, you know, there might not be a resolution to this autonomy problem that we've just been talking about. It just might not have 
an answer. Uh, certainly there's no consensus on it. And it may be, and I, I would argue in fact, that ethics is in fact the wrong frame to govern autonomous intelligent systems. It's not that we want the systems to be ethical. It's that we want the systems to behave according to a legal framework, which we can define. You see the difference here. <coughs> ethics brings in a whole bunch of things that legal frameworks don't. Legal frameworks bring in their own things, like, for example, legal responsibility, like, for example, civil and tort law, things like that, that have nothing to do with ethics. And then finally... Uh, new, new big question. Is morality part of ethics? Morality is part of ethics. Okay, thanks. Um, if, I, if I had to characterize it, and again, of course, there's no agreement in any of these definitions, but morality is, uh, is ethics applied to individuals, or ethics is individual ap morality applied to society or applied generally. That's generally the relation. Morality tends to be individual. Ethics tends to be systemic or society-wide. That's a rough and ready distinction. Um, and then is ethics itself divisible in the way that they've divided it here? Uh, is it reducible to a series of issues? Can you break it down the way you break down an engineering problem? Uh, can it even be understood as the applications of principles or rules? So there's a whole domain of ethics, which is rule-based ethics, but there's a whole domain of ethics that's not. And, and so and, and, and I think that they're taking pretty much the whole rule-based approach here because that's what standards are, are rules. Um, but a lot of ethics isn't. So a lot of, you know, it's like... Uh, you know, a lot of ethics is based on, you know, for example, the whole uh, empiricist school of ethics, where ethics is uh, based on sensation or feeling. Uh, Hume talked of, of a moral sense, for example. Uh, even things like utilitarianism, there's a distinction to be drawn between act utilitarianism and rule utilitarianism, where act utilitarianism looks at the consequences of specific actions, and rule utilitarianism has you ignore the specific actions and look at the consequences of following a particular rule over the long run. They've drawn none of these kinds of distinctions at all, and, and so I would, I would criticize them for that. Anyhow, they move to foundations. And what they're after is establishing foundations for morality, autonomy, and intelligence. And they draw on, quote, the three traditional economic divisions, individual, family, and society, which I found fascinating in itself, uh, and then question the disconnection of the autonomous individual from wider society. And this comes back to a lot of Carol Gilligan's stuff where she sees the individual as inextricably connected to wider society. I'm using the word connected very loosely here. But uh, they make some points respecting this. They, they say, first of all, keep in mind, machines do not comprehend the moral or legal rules they follow. Um, which is the Chinese room experiment writ small, and they argue that we should expand the definition of ethics to include the classical foundations of economy, at which point I was kind of rolling on the floor, but uh, anyhow. Um, so both of these recommendations obviously can be contested. Uh, humans don't necessarily comprehend the moral or legal rules they follow. And even more to the point, what do you mean by comprehend? Um, in, especially in the case of machines. Um, and, you know, why economics and politics? Why are these the basic rules? Why not physics and astro uh, uh, physics, biology, or even astrology? I mean, they don't actually give us any grounds for this. Well, do they have a thing about jobs and, uh, you know, AI taking over jobs and so they're reasoning back from there and want to throw that in? Not in this mm -hmm. section. No. Okay. 
I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, that would be an argument. But, you know, but again, you could equally as validly argue back from evolutionary biology, right? And, and get a whole different set of conclusions about, you know, if, if you look at evolution, well, you know, just think of machines as the evolution of intelligence and ultimately, uh, you know, evolution moves forward. So whatever the machines progress to, whether or not we as individuals think it's good or bad, they're at a higher state. Um, and really it's up to the machines to define their own intelligence or their own ethics. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, why is it inconsistent to argue that? Um, you know, this, of course, would violate their foundational principle. But again, you know, why is their foundational principle foundational? Uh, so, again, they, and now this is this slide on agents and patients. Uh, really bad terminology. Um, but this gets right to the heart of the whole autonomy thing. So what the distinction between agents and patients is, in this case, is the distinction between moral agents and moral subjects, right? Mm -hmm. So think of doctor-patient, which is where the terminology comes from, right? The doctor is the agent, the doctor is doing something, the patient is the subject, the patient is having something done to them, right? So there's so they draw here in drawing this distinction a distinction between quote unquote natural self organizing systems, in other words, humans, animals, nature, environment, versus artificial non self organizing devices. In other words, things that are, for lack of a better word, created. Um, given that deep learning is in some important way self-organizing, I'm not sure how this distinction flies in the long term, but that's how they've drawn it. And so they use this to define how autonomy in machines defines how they act and operate independently in certain contexts, independently of control, right? So in other words, the machines act without direct instruction from a human and that action has uh, or should have efficient and agreeable moral outcomes. Efficient, of course, is the econ economics coming into it. Um, meanwhile, human traditions manifest as fundamentalism under the guise of morality. That's, they actually say that, which is why I've given a page number there. And they look at this and decide that John Stuart Mill's ethics provides a detailed and informed foundation for defining autonomy. Uh, I think it does that, but I don't think it would be a, a mutually agreed upon uh, foundation for defining autonomy. A lot of people criticize Mill uh, because his is a consequentialist system. Uh, his is a system that is, is based on uh, goodness for society, uh, but also goodness for the individual, where the goodness for society reduces to the goodness for the individual. In other words, what's good for society is an aggregation of what's good for individuals. A lot of people would disagree with that. Um, yes. So, they recommend that we first consider free will, civil liberty, and society from a million perspectives. That is a utilitarian perspective and also the uh, theory of liberty as described in, in his uh, book on liberty. And I personally like that theory, but I, I know a lot of people do not. Um, and basically the principle is that uh, people ought to, per ought to be able to pursue their own good in their own way, provided that this pursuit does not prevent other people pursuing their own good in their own way. So, well and good, but now, you know, whose good does a machine pursue? We'll come back to that. Uh, but, but first of all, 
I don't think that there's a dis division between machine agents and machine subjects as defined here. From my perspective, certainly at this state in technological development, all machines are, sub are subjects. They are created by and acted on by a human agent. Uh, they don't go off doing their own thing. If, they, if it appears that they're going off doing their own thing, it's because they have been instructed in some way to do so. Uh, even advanced algorithms, and there's been lots of discussion in this, um, they're designed with objectives, background assumptions, and the like. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm particularly concerned about separating the responsibility for an AI's actions from its designer. And so I, I would say as long as machines are designed and crucially owned, they are not moral agents in and of themselves. That's the position I would take. Um, anyhow, uh, with respect to vocabulary, um, you know, they've put this into philosophical and ethical terminology. Um, from my perspective, not everybody has the background to understand that. And you don't necessarily need a formal education, but you need to have read some philosophy, uh, and you need to have talked about it and worked with it, and you know, and at least spent some time thinking about it. Um, philosophical theories are useful, but now this is their recommendation in order to facilitate uh, ethics in artificial. Uh, uh, autonomous and intelligent systems. They recommend support groups, raising awareness for social and ethics committees, and secondly, I thought this was interesting, have philosophy scholars and ethicists present in non-philosophy courses for AIS technologists. I'd actually do it the other way around, too. I'd have technologists presenting courses for philosophers. I think that'd probably be a good idea. Um, another Another aspect of this, presenting ethics to the creators of autonomous and intelligent systems. Um, can these classical ethics be used to produce meta-level meta orientations of data collection and data use? Um, this I found really odd. The key, they said, is to embed ethics into engineering in a way that does not make ethics as a servant but instead a partner in the process, a.k.a. ethics in practice. Um, and then to uh, you know, do the, the usual online learning for this, pre you know, present uh, students with job aids, increase complexity, provide students as a me with a means to use ethics in a manner analogous to how they're being used, they're being taught to use engineering principles and tools. And the thing is, ethics isn't like engineering principles and tools. Uh, it's just a different kind of thing. Uh, and the question I would ask is, would engineers comprehend the moral and legal rules that they follow? Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. Um, Steven? Yeah? Uh, you, to, to, to be an engineer, you have to take a course on ethics. I mean, that's how it is now. Yeah, and I used to teach that course. <laughs> and engineers, they have codes of ethics. Yeah. And there's codes of ethics. And there's a code of ethics for software engineering. There's mm -hmm. codes of ethics for other stuff. Did they talk about this at all? Because, you know... Not I mean, No, not no? specifically. Yeah. Well, I yeah, think too, because I, I never took the course. I took the exam in lieu of the course because <laughs> it was a different... Well, it's just because I started in Moncton. The course was in fourth year. I finished in Montreal, and there it was in first year, right? Yeah. Yeah. When I took the exam, uh, the takeaway for me in the end is it's at a very high level. And it's it has... Nothing in those courses could lead you to apply uh, what you've learned to systems that are coming about is my overall feeling yeah just too generic yeah they're, they're trying to do an entire discipline in one course uh, it doesn't make sense exactly it's about you know don't kill people yeah. stuff like that rather yeah. than okay how do you design the system mm -hmm. so that bias is removed and blah 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 and oh by the way are you aware of bias yeah 
Yeah, it is about don't kill people. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is a good place to start, but... Anyhow, um, that's basically the time that I have. So I'm going to end the presentation here. I have a few more slides, but it goes on in a similar vein. Um, do read this, though. I think it's, it's worth reading, for sure. Um, I, I would recommend reading it, but, you know, keep in mind that this is a, you know, very much an effort to try to do something that might not actually be doable. Um, so, so just so you know, I just shared it with the people that, uh, that I was on a mailing list with, uh, um, immigration and pointed to your commentary on it as well. Okay. Uh, um, so yeah. I thought it was really interesting. It was, yeah. it was definitely an interesting report, for sure. No, I didn't read the report yet. Oh. Your presentation about it okay. makes me want to read it now. Thank you. I'll, I will put both the report and the presentation on the wiki page of the HCI Reading Club. Uh, so everyone will have access to it like, within a few days. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, it's an interesting topic that raises a lot of questions. I Maybe could have gone no on for another answers. three or four hours to get to because there's so much in there.